Okay, welcome in. In this video, we're going to uh, do some neat simulations with branching processes. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of packages in R that um, will let you do sort of branching processes stuff. Um, I think it's good to kind of code it from scratch just so you can kind of understand what's happening, play with the parameters a bit and, and think about the, the process. So working in our studio, we have a couple of videos on getting started in our studio if this doesn't look familiar, but we're going to get get right into it. So the first thing we want to do is set the seed. I've talked about this before, but there's nothing truly random in computer generation. This just allows us to start at the same point in our uh, number generation, which means the results that we'll get that we get will be re replicable, which which is something we're going to use. So set the seed, and I set the number of simulations and and sims uh, to one thousand. Um, and now I'm going to create my offspring distribution. So. Uh, this is like common parlance in uh, branching processes. I'm going to say I ha can have zero to four offspring. So like each cell either has either a zero offspring, it doesn't have any, it has one child, two children, three, three children, four children. Um, and I'm going to define these as the probabilities of uh, those offspring. So with 55%, um, that cell dies out and 20%, it has one child, 20%, two children. Maybe in this case, it 0%, it has three children, but 5%, it has, it has four children. Um, and we can check what the average, um, offspring, uh, will be in this case, each, each cell is expected to have 0 0.8 offspring. So that's our uh, very simple start for actual actually creating the offspring distribution. Now we can set up the data we want to track. And um, I kind of want to track the extinction um, and uh, kind of generations over time. So we're going to have a data table. I'll just define it here um, where each uh, row tells us the trial that we're running. So trial one, trial two, et cetera, it, a Boolean for if it goes extinct. So zero, if it doesn't go extinct, one, if it does, the number of uh, generations that it took to go extinct, if it does go extinct, and then uh, the number of uh, cells in that generation. So let's go ahead and get into our for loop. I'm gonna maximize this window. Um, we are gonna loop, uh, do n sims trials. And for each loop, we're gonna set the population at one. And we're going to uh, say we're at the zeroth generation. We, the, the zeroth generation, there's, there's uh, um, one cell and everything kind of goes from there. We're going to use a while loop, um, which is very nice for this application because we don't know how many loops we want to do. So we can't use a for loop. We're going to go while uh, true, which means we're going to continue to loop until we actually have a break condition. And our first, uh, th this is kind of the most important piece of code. This is the actual like offspring process. We uh, are going to sample from offspring, which again is just a vector from zero to four, telling you how many offspring you can have. And we are going to do, we're going to sample from that um, according to how big the population is. So in this case, population is one. We are going to sample uh, once from offspring according to P, which is the offspring distribution, remember. And we're going to sample one time, and this is going to tell us how many kids uh, the cell had. So in this case, it had one. In this case, it had zero. In this case, it had zero, two kids, one kid, um, et cetera. Now, uh, we want this to be able to generalize to when we have more than one uh, cell in a generation, right? So let's say we have three cells in a generation, population equals three. That's why we have this replace equals true uh, argument. That means we're sampling from offspring with replacement. So we'll, con we'll continue to sample three times. Um, and let's see, this is saying the first cell had zero children, the second cell had one ch child, the third cell had one child. Maybe another time, this is a uh, prolific generation. First cell had two children, second cell had two, third cell had zero. Etc. And we want to sum across all of these. Uh, so maybe in this case there were there were a total of two. We want to sum across all of these because um, um, because we want to see the number of, of cells that are in the next generation. Um, so that's our sampling, uh, and then we want to do our break condition. So we want to see if this naturally if this population has gone extinct. So if there's zero left in the population, we don't want to continue. We set our data extinct uh, value uh, equal to one. We set our generations. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a second. We say how many generations we've had, um, and then we also uh, note down the population, which is going to be zero. Um, and we kind of break out of the loop if that happens. If that doesn't, um, if it doesn't happen. If we still have non-zero in the population, then we just increment generations by one. So we say, okay, we've had one more generation, another generation, and kind of go from there. So uh, let's run this code. I'm gonna just run this. Um, and you can see it ran, it finished, and now we can visualize it. So I can peek at the data 
And uh, you can see here in this first trial, uh, trial one uh, went extinct after one generation. And there were obviously zero cells in that generation because it was extinct. Trial two actually went, went extinct right away, zero generations that it survived. Um, trial, trial three uh, it made it six generations and then it went extinct, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we can actually look at you know, these results, just a uh, simple ggplot histogram. We have videos on, on ggplot if you're interested. Um, but here's just the distribution of um, the branching process. So, you know, most of these processes don't really make it past a couple of generations. You have a couple that are far out. We can see which one lived the longest. In this case, it was trial 133 made it 27 generations. Um, so, you know, if we wanted to, that's the nice thing about set seed is we can um, uh, run this set the seed. Um, we can go to, what was it? It was one, 130, trial 133 was the one, the prodigious one. So we can go to 132 run this code. And now uh, basically we're kind of in the same like random loop so we can get um, the same um, the same um, results. So now I'm in like loop 133, I'd run population, I run generations. And now let's see what I'm gonna get when I actually sample the first. Um, and I get, I get a, a sample of two, which um, makes sense like a decently prodigious. I'm gonna increment, so it doesn't equal zero, add to the generation to run the sampling again, see what my population is. And, and uh, again, another prodigious uh, generation. So you can see how the reason that this, um, this specific trial lasted so long is because the first couple of um, uh, offspring did, did pretty well and, and had a bunch of offspring. So uh, kind of went from there. And, and we can track like that, the process of how that branching process evolves over time. We're going to do more of that in, in our next um, video. But a nice way to, if you want to ever go check like a specific um, a specific result. So I'm just going to run this again, uh, just to get the data that we had. Um, and uh, again, like the last thing we can do is just see the extinction probability. Um, and in this case, it is is one every single uh, process went extinct. And for the you know, if you were if you were watching closely, you probably realize that um, the average the mean offspring of the offspring distribution is less than one, which as we've seen, and I'll link the book below, if the, the mean of the offspring distribution is one, the population will go extinct with probability one. Um, maybe that will take a long time. Um, in this case, it mostly didn't take a long time, but it's guaranteed to go extinct with probability one. So that's why in this case, um, we, we had that. So this is a bit of a boring example. Uh, everything went extinct, probability one, it was certain. What if we have a more aggressive offspring distribution where the offspring are a bit more prodigious? So let's say we have the same offspring, zero to four, but let's say our probabilities are different. So we only have a 35% chance of not having zero offspring, 35% chance of one, 10% uh, chance of two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and in this case, our average offspring is uh, 1.2. So this is more interesting because it's not guaranteed that the, the process will go extinct. Um, so let's run everything like we did as is, and you'll see um, that my loop is still clocking. It hasn't finished. So any any guesses as to why this hasn't finished yet? I'm going to hit escape and get out of this. Check I. And you can see we only made it to the second iteration. Um, and this, in the second iteration, we can see what our generations is. Uh, made it 91 generations and still not extinct. Uh, we can see what our population is. Oop, sorry, population. Wow. So this population completely exploded. So as you hopefully guess correctly, um, th there are pop there are trials where the um, the branching process will not die out here and will just explode. And here you've got you know what is this? Um, 50 million cells in the 91st generation, which is why it's taking so long. We have to run that sample each time, figure out how many each of these have. And in this case, the population just exploded. It's not going extinct. And remember, our break condition uh, will only break if the population actually goes extinct. So that's why this was running forever and it would continue you know, running forever um, because we, you know, we, weren't, we weren't careful with our break condition. So instead, um, we're gonna keep this condition in, but we're also gonna add a special case. We're gonna say, 30 generations. Um, if we get past 30 generations, uh, then uh, probably a good chance that the population is not going to go extinct. Let's just cut out there. So if, uh, 30 generations, more than 30 generations, uh, we're going to say it did not go extinct. We're going to add the generations. We're going to add the size of the population. And we're going to break from there. So let's run the code. Um, ran much quicker that time because we, we kind of cut it off. And now we can analyze uh, the results. So the same plot. Um, it's going to look a bit different. And here you can see still a lot of 
the trials didn't really make it past five generations, but you see a big bunching up here. Um, and these are the trials where they prospered until generation 30. And uh, we said, shut it off. That's probably going to survive forever. You know, it's not certain it's going to survive forever. Uh, shut it off. And, and, and we'll count that as something that, that survived. We can check out the generation that lived the longest. Um, that's actually trial two, which is kind of funny because if you remember earlier, we got stuck in, in two. By generation 31, there were 862 cells. So, you know, that's that's not, you know, there's so many cells that is not going to go extinct. Um, and that's, you know, that's the one that lived the longest. We can actually just look at the generations that survived, uh, the trials that survived to generation 31. And you can see like all of these have hundreds of cells um, by generation 31 in these, you know, for different trials. So they're probably not going to go extinct. Um, and finally, we can estimate the extinction probability. We can say mean of data extinct. And still, most uh, processes will go extinct, probability of 76, um, which is, again, a, just a rough estimate. Um, you'd have to, you, you want to, this is not a proof, you want to run more simulations, maybe you want to stretch the like generation filter out longer. Um, but it is a pretty reasonable heuristic, like 76% of, 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 the, of the processes will go extinct. So a very nice way to sort of play with branching processes when you have um, the distribution and, and you can sort of just analyze what's happening. So hopefully you enjoyed this. This was focused uh, a lot on extinction. Um, in the next branching processes video, we'll talk more about the long-term properties of these processes. Um, as well as like actually stepping into the the evolution over time. So see you next time.